Hello, my name is Claire. I'm the founder of Student RDH and Smarter DA Dental Hygiene Dental Assisting Exam Prep Solutions. Today, coronal polishing. Usually, patients love coronal polishing because it gives them this tingly feeling that they got a nice cleaning and everything is great and smooth. But sometimes we have to say no. As a dental professional, we have to understand when to say yes or no. The reason is because every time you do some sort of polishing, you are wearing down the tooth a little bit, little by little. I mean, the, you were talking about really, really small micrometers that we no, don't see at all, but it's important to know that you are doing that. That's why we can't do it every single time the patient sees us. So let's look into the contraindication and indication. Now, this is the indication. I know the letters are pretty small. If you want, I can just make them bigger. Maybe this will work a little better. All right, how about that? Is that better? Okay, so what I have here is a picture of some stain. And you can tell this is probably tobacco stain, but those are the uh, indication, okay? This is when we say, yes you can have polishing i totally support that and this is gonna help you all right first item over here is light stain the reason why it says light is because when it is heavy we just can't do much for them we have to get a cleaning or something different in order to uh, take care of the stain but light stain is good this one we see over here is actually a little bit um it's a lot you know, I doubt that you can really take care of it with polishing, but this is just an example that extrinsic, so outside stain can be removed with coronal polishing. And light plaque, okay, if they have some plaque, not too much, you can use polishing to really just take it out. Sometimes it's important before the dental cleaning as well, so that you can just help the process a little bit. Before you place sealant, you clean everything out before you place the dam as well. And then when you place bands or brackets, you want the clean, uh, smooth surface. That's what you polish. And then when you put crowns and bridges as well, okay? Any imperfection, you just smooth it out. And same concept for uh, when you have some cement residue, you just don't want that because let's say this is a tooth and there's a little bump of residue over here. Well, this is going to be a great place for all the bacteria to start living and make plaque and calculus. And then before the selection of a shade guide, the reason because you want to have the nice natural tooth shade in order to match that shade with something artificial like a veneer. Okay, we don't want some uh, darker tea stain to be there and match a shade when when they're gonna get a cleaning and a polishing while the natural tooth looks actually brighter than it is and the fake tooth now is darker. Okay, I think you understand that. So let's just quickly review those. As a checklist, you have, okay, light stain. Oops, light stain, light plaque as well. Okay, the keyword is uh, light. When you place sealant, dental dam, bands and brackets for ortho, crowns and bridges, and you have cement residue, and then when you are going to put something of a shade. Now let's look at the contraindication. When do you say no? It is important because a lot of times or we, we actually overdo this, okay? Um, I hate to say that, but as a dental hygienist, you know, as... Um, you know, a dental professional, we just don't really think we just go through the motion of polishing. Sometimes that's not good. Okay, as you can see, my screen is, uh, the letters are bigger already just because I enlarged it. I just came back with the video. So when do we say, no, sorry, we can't even though you want me to do it, dentist, or you want me to do it, patient. When there is no stain, um, we because again, there is a little bit of tooth taken out every time we do that, okay? It's like polishing anything. Let's think about a car. Every time you do it, you're taking some millimeters off, not millimeters here in our case of the tooth, but uh, every time our crown part, which is the enamel, thins. So we have to be careful and we are supposed to live with this one pair of teeth that we were given as an adult forever. 
and there are demineralized spots so demineralized spots will look like white spots okay that are freckled usually um but when you see that you're like okay danger zone for this demineralized spot let me not touch that because when you run the polishing over you might actually weaken it even further when there are root caries first of all let me say that when you have a tooth this is the crown part and this is the root part as the name suggests coronal polishing you only polish the top the coronal the crown part okay the root you're not even supposed to touch it anyhow but especially when you have caries it's a no-no you don't touch that part when you have gold composite veneer and porcelain restorations now why because a regular polishing the pumice or whatever we use might actually hurt the restoration if you run this over gold you're making a lot of scratches in porcelain as well because it's weaker than our natural crown the enamel part so you want to be careful and choose the right pumice now i'm not going to go over the pumice today in a review but please uh, go back to your study guide, whether you're using Student RJ Smarter DA or any textbook. Make sure you understand what type of pumice you should be using. But just the regular one, when you see restorations, just avoid it. Okay, you also say no right after an SRP or NSPT. So after uh, what we call a deep cleaning, we don't want to introduce the bacteria back inside. Things are a little weak already. The gums are a little uh, softer. So we just are going to do polishing later. A patient with hypertension, some other diseases. The reason is because the pumice can contain sodium. The sodium is going to make the disease worse. So when we have a patient with some diseases, please look at the chart and say, does the patient has hypertension, which is one of the number one medical condition in North America? If so, make sure they use a pumice that does not contain sodium. Okay, continuing with the contraindication, when do we say no? When there is an infection disease that can spread through aerosol, like tuberculosis, okay? You have done polishing before, you know things spread everywhere. That's the problem. When there are bacteria or viruses in the aerosol that the patient has, but spreads all over the dental office, you are putting yourself at danger and other patients in danger. So before you do that, review medical conditions. Okay, patient with periodontitis, gingivitis, unhealthy tissue. You don't want to give them polishing again because the tissue is weak. When there is intrinsic stain, so look at this one. This one is um, blue, actually. Dentinogenesis imperfecta can cause some blue stain, but the blue is inside. It's not extrinsic. The tobacco stain is extrinsic, but this one is inside. So before you say, okay, there is stain, understand is it inside or outside? Because if it's inside, polishing will not do anything. And when there is recession, recession because, again, we never polish the roots anyhow, but if we touch them, this part is much weaker, okay, compared to the enamel part, so it's going to be super sensitive. When there is demineralization, um, this goes actually with this one that says demineralized spots when it's white. And the newly erupted teeth, okay, they are still mineralizing. So let, let's not run it to make it weaker. Let it sit. Okay, when you have a pediatric patient, you see teeth coming out. Do not touch it with the polisher. And large pulp. So... The primary teeth, the children's teeth, have larger pulp. Let me just exaggerate it compared to adult teeth. For that, because their nerves and blood vessels here, they're going to feel a lot more sensitive. The heat is going to transmit a lot faster. So that's why we avoid polishing in children, unless it's really needed. And then exposed uh, cements and dented. This goes back to... Um, the root part as well. We do not polish roots. So let's just quickly overview it together. We are going to check everything. Do you remember when there is no stain? Don't do it. 
when there is okay sorry I had to get my pen when there are spots that are demineralized that are white don't do it it comes back to this one as well okay check check roots do not touch them this goes back to here cementum and dentin do not touch the roots gold restoration veneer porcelain you see restoration stay away or use the right pumice and after the patient had some sort of dental or periodontal treatment and then when they have medical condition that can be um, harmed by some sodium content in the pumice and then other infection diseases that can spread, such as I, I put tuberculosis as an example. And then when they have a periodontitis, gingivitis, some sort of um, periodontal conditions, and when the stain is inside, just like this one, blue, dentinogenesis imperfecta, there's also um, tetracycline, sorry, tetracycline stain. And this one also is inside, okay? You have to differentiate between the outside and the inside when there is recession, goes back to the root, no. And then when you have a new tooth, okay? The new ones, the babies, do not touch it. Do not touch it with the rough things, just like, you know, baby skin. You apply them the nice lotion, same concept. And when the teeth have large pulse, which are usually the primary teeth because of sensitivity. So I hope this all makes sense, okay? If you want this um, checklist, actually go to Student RDA or Smarter DA and find the blog about coronal polishing. And from there, you will see an area when it says, do you want to download this um, checklist? I hope this was helpful. My name is Claire. You can always email me, clairej at studentrdh.com or clairej at smarterda.com. Have a wonderful day. Bye.